Well, morning, fellow zombies. Uh, we've got our coffee yet. I know what the hell I'm forgetting on a Sunday morning. What the hell am I doing this recording for in the first place without my coffee? Give me a second, will you? So, while the uh, water pot is getting heat, so I can get my instant coffee fixed. I'm turning this one over, not to politics, but to uh, health scares that happened within the past decade. Not of me, directly or indirectly, but it could have been. A lot of things have changed in our time. A lot of things have changed. And it's hard to put these things in the word because some people are just... I don't know, still sensitive about this thing, and I wouldn't blame them anyway. We had a nightmare. We had a biological nightmare that hit us within this past decade. And I know that if my family had been alive when this bug hit us, turned it into a pandemic nightmare, that my mother would not have survived it, nor would my brother have. My mother probably would have gotten the vaccinations, but her system was still too compromised. And what happened was a hit when it hit in the time that my mother and my brother were passed. You guys know that I keep showing this particular picture all the time. I try to keep that... Uh, in the picture all the time in there, the cabinet. These are the people that really affect me a great deal. Both alive and dead and death. If the pandemic had hit us years earlier, Ma's condition was she was bedridden for the last two or three years of her life fully and it was uh, pretty much of a nightmare getting her in on and off the pot when she needed the most getting about uh, 12 or what get her a midnight snack let alone trying to get her into her car to get her to places when we when it was just deemed necessary to get the medical staff to her house that I were checked out. At least nurses would give the uh, doctors all the information necessary. But during that time, we didn't have any epidemics or pandemics going on. Ma passed away in 2013, of February. She missed it by several years. Dave was already suffering through health scares during that time. His heart was still giving him hell left and right. Angina attacks. His own life, he had been active. But slowly but surely, when you do a lot of damage to it, you know, shrapnel in the back, blown out kneecaps replaced by titanium, gets harder and harder to deal with and then the heart starts he never had the heart trouble when he was a lot younger he didn't it was only when he got older that it became more and more apparent if I'm not mistaken back in the 90s is when it started getting to him a friend of mine had his wife fiance had a kid and they're in a hospital out in San Fernando Valley Valley Press David didn't realize he was having a heart attack during that time he was feeling some weird ass strange things so Ma and I were able to go home but David was put into the hospital 
Well, we heard about it, man. We freaked us out. I had to go back to the hospital. They checked him out. Yeah, he had a heart attack. Stabilized for a short time and then transported back home so he could be at home. But this was hard for him to deal with, not to mention us. So every once in a while, he would get into a into an angina, they called it. But it's still a heart attack. Not a massive, major blow, but just a smaller blow, but it's still... It adds up damage to his heart. But he still was physically active enough to take care of Ma. I just had to keep an eye on him and Ma. He was also turning into, diabet uh, into diabetes like crazy, uh, type 2. So there was problems with his sugar. If he couldn't keep the food down, then there was something wrong with his damn blood work. But these kind of scares would have been the openings for the bug to get to him. Ma was already compromised. Ma had already been compromised a while ago. I just never seen her going to hospitals for anything else but maybe about lung issues. Uh, pneumonia once in a while. But she was still compromised enough to get a bug and really do her in. And you know the weird part about it? I kept hearing horror stories in ho about hospitals that really weren't the great place of getting healed. You get stabilized, but you stay there long enough, you might pick up something else. And they kept worrying about MRSA and every other damn skin infection out there. And not to mention septus and God knows what else. So, they talked about it for years, for decades on that one. We would think hospitals would have been a place for people to get well enough to go transport home and recover. Or live out the rest of their lives in a long-term care facility. It's amazing how so many people still get nailed by these things. You don't hardly ever hear about MRSA anymore. Skin infection that eats away your skin and turns you into a living skeleton. Flesh-eating bacteria. Hadn't heard about those damn things in a long while. It's just a good thing because we actually had them back in force. We were definitely in for it. But it would still give me the heebie-jeebies. I hadn't been in a hospital a hell of a long while. Not since my youth. I stayed a hell away from it. My heart's still okay for right now, thank God. My lungs, yeah, they're okay too. I got asthma, but that could be the gateway into my body for the bug. The pandemic bug to get in. <laughs> when we had the... Uh, Well, we had the inoculations for it. I lined up with those outside of a pharmacy in my town, Roseman. I was going to get it. I was going to get it. I needed it. I hate needles. I said it before. The medical establishment, I really had a thing against the medical establishment, but the one thing I never liked is having a damn bug in my neighborhood. And especially in my own internal na neighborhood. Under the skin and in my blood vessels. And that particular thing. So yeah, that ticked me off, Riley. I didn't want that bug inside my system at all. So I had to eat my fear on this one. I mean, I royally had to eat my fear. Standing in line, waiting for about an hour. People were you know, going through the paperwork. And I'm going through the damn paperwork. Fill the paperwork on them. There's that snaky line through one way and another, and then you wind up in the back, and there's the guy. Fadoik! That's it. You're gone. Wait here about 10, 15 minutes. Just sit here. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I did videos about that one. I posted it on video uh, on YouTube on that one. 
I wanted to tell people how what it was like. I think somewhere in my flash drives I still got the videos. But I'm scary as hell. I hated needles and I had to get stuck in this damn thing. And I got my a video of me getting stuck by the damn needle. Needle penetrating into this and just ooh. Ah I hear my pot going. Give me a second. Coffee, 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 coffee. Got the coffee. Okay, so Yeah, I know I heard about the health scares. And I kept hearing about the damn arguments regarding these the injections are bad, they're gonna be doing this, they're gonna be doing that. And I had made one sarcastic video concerning about my sarcasm against those who are being the anti vaxxers and stuff. And YouTube said ah, ah, ah. So I really had to modify that video over there. I really wanted to go all sarcastic on them. COVID was a nightmare. It was kicking people's asses left and right. <sighs> Leaving them debilitated. And not to mention adding more and more waiting times to the crematoriums or burial sites. I didn't want to be one of them. I didn't want any of it. But I'll tell you something. If I had my family alive during that time, they wouldn't have been alive. They would have been part of that, that quote. Yeah, I did say the quota, didn't I? Somebody had a quota somewhere. Doing a countdown how many people would be passing away because the COVID nightmare would be visiting upon them and then taking them away. Meanwhile, people are saying about the vaccinations. Other this and that and this and that and this and that and this. God knows. But this was a nightmare that we dealt with. It's muted. I mean, it's small percentages. It's still out there. It's still nailing people left and right. Slightly compromised one way or another with their immune systems, and they're open season for it. I'm saying this one YouTuber out there. It's been out there for a few years talking about science. A beautiful young lady. She goes by the handle physics girl. Very smart. Very smart. And she's being tre uh, she's being cared for by her husband. He was also very smart too. She's dealing with the long term of it, not the short term. Heartfelt prayers and thoughts go out for them. I know what it's like to care give and not regarding a nightmare situation like a damn bug. But then again, like my mom, she also had to deal with bugs and infections and had to have a central IV hooked up. And so had my brother at one time, but only to deal with infections right after a surgery. And my mother? That was hard to deal with when she had to get a central line hooked up. And nurses would have to come in and give her the uh, IV. That's not easy dealing with that one, I'll tell you that. Go ahead, changed our world more ways than one. We're still dealing with the effects economically to this time. There's an area out in Topanga Canyon, California, where geologic activity slides. Soil just decided, okay, that's it. We're covering highways. So the one highway that would lead into a town in Topanga that would basically stifle and crush an economy in there. People had shops shopping and browsing and stuff. And it's a travel way between San Fernando Valley and Pacific Coast Highway. 
We had gotten so oversaturated that uh, the soil is no longer holding the water. Even the vegetation is having a problem. Even with its long roots, they're still having a hard time trying to hold the soil together. So now we got a massive slide that still has to be worked on. It'll take months for that one. The geologists are not quite sure. And the long-term residents have been out there for know, several decades, within the past several decades, and made it their home. I dealt with fire. They dealt with other floods. But they hadn't dealt with the collapsing economy that slides were going to be putting them out of business. And that saddens me because I've been through it a few times. Hell, many times at one time. Back in the 90s, we still had some occasional rain coming through, but we didn't have that much sliding going on in the PCA. Well, actually, we did have in the PCH, but not through the Topanga that much until the ground was really getting oversaturated in this century, in this decade, in this year. But I'd seen the towns. I'd seen some of the shops that were set up in there, just driving by. And it's a beautiful areas that they have in the Topanga Canyon. But they had to have it closed down because of safety. Changes in my world that I'm not quite ready or willing to accept. We have national, international politics. We have wars going on right now. We also have geologic upheaval happening these days. I'm seeing at different places that they're having volcanism going on. Volcanoes spewing off. Iceland's still dealing with their situation for about, oh, God knows how long. I lost track of it. Indonesia's been having it. Mexico's been having it. I'm surprised Japan hadn't had it yet. Pacific Rim of Fire and all that. And we've been having our occasional rumblings. Small here and there, but still constant. But I led off with a health scare because I hadn't talked about the COVID in a hell of a long while. It was one of those things that would flag the auditors out there a great deal. If there was misinformation being sent, if there was wrong information being sent, you get flagged in a damn thing. But even in this day and age, we're still dealing with that thing. And maybe with new biological menaces ready to pop up from the ground or from the air. You know what scares me also? Is the more we get into glacial warming, glacial melting, I'm wondering what kind of microbes and viruses are hiding in there. That's what scares me. Stuff we hadn't seen yet. We have people popping up with their conspiracy theories about a man-made concoction is loaded up with stuff that's going to do something to a person. And yeah, that pops up every once in a great while. Now they're talking about space lasers. No, one mouth is still trying to talk about space lasers controlling our border. I don't believe this woman's have ever figured the shit out. She's not smart enough. It takes decades to get the lasers worked on. I mean, we've already gotten how many? Three or four decades. Maybe about three decades. Maybe trying to test out equipment. See whether or not if there is going to be a laser-based system. Or they're also testing on hypersonic missiles. We have yet to have a Star Wars defense system or defense shield of sorts. And 
having a, a missile system along the southern border to protect us from human beings, human beings, bipedals walking across the ground, and now we got to shoot them with missiles. Fear mongering is going so far that I know the experts out there are wondering whether or not if this particular representative of the United States government is actually ready for the ready for the nut form. Or she needs some serious psychological adjustments here. I don't get it these days. I really don't. Right now, I'm not about to. I'm not about to too much.